the interior of some thematic studio. A woman, approximately 35 years old, wearing a pink blouse, dark trousers and black suede ballet flats set on her bare feet. In the video we see a sitting position, where alternately one leg is folded over the other. The woman partially removes the footwear on the foot of the hanging leg. Scientists have developed a cyanobacteria-based battery that powered a computer for six months. Researchers in the UK have used a widespread species of cyanobacteria to power a computer. Their system has the potential to become a cheap and renewable way to power small electrical devices. In the tests, the cyanobacteria provided energy to a computer for six months which during that time calculated the sum of consecutive integers to simulate working under load. In a container slightly larger than an R battery, made of aluminum and plastic. Scientists from the University of Cambridge in Great Britain placed Synecosystis cyanobacteria, which naturally obtained solar energy through photosynthesis. The small electric current they generated was used to power the microprocessor for six months. The device description and test results were published in Energy and Environmental Science. The project being developed by researchers from Cambridge aims to provide a new power option for small electronic devices. Constant development and rapid technological progress in recent years mean that more and more power is needed. Batteries are good, but they have their limits. In addition, they not only increase the weight of the device, but also require expensive and toxic substances. Therefore, the researchers thought about creating a living energy source that converts material available in nature into an ecological and simple energy cell. The system they developed is made of readily available and inexpensive materials that are largely recyclable. This means that it can be easily replicated to power a large number of small devices as part of, for example, the Internet of Things. Researchers say it will probably be most useful in places where there is no network access. The evolving Internet of Things needs more and more energy. And we believe that this will need to come from systems that can generate energy. Not simply store it like batteries, said Professor Christopher Howe from Cambridge University's Department of Biochemistry, co-author of the paper. Our photosynthetic device doesn't run out like a battery because it constantly uses light as its energy source, he added. Cyanobacteria do not need feeding because they produce food in the process of photosynthesis. It is enough to provide them with the right conditions and they will generate energy without supplementing nutrients. Which is why the developed photosynthetic device does not run out of energy because it draws energy from sunlight. A cyanobacteria-based installation was able to provide power to a computer for six months. The system worked in home conditions, in natural light. He was also exposed to household temperature fluctuations. Cyanobacteria allowed the computer to run in cycles of 45 minutes on and then 15 minutes on standby. However, the computer did not perform complex actions. It calculated the sum of consecutive integers to simulate computational work. The system consumed 0.3 microwatts of power during operation and 0.24 during standby. Under ideal laboratory conditions, the R battery-sized version of the cell managed to produce just over 4 microwatts. But the team believes they can squeeze more out of cyanobacteria. We were impressed with how consistently the system worked over a long period of time. At first we thought it might stop after a few weeks. But it just worked, said Dr. Paolo Bombelli of the University of Cambridge's Department of Biochemistry and lead author of the paper. However, it is not clear how this happens.
The team believes that the most likely explanation is that cyanobacteria release electrons during photosynthesis. Interestingly, despite the fact that photosynthesis requires light, the device can generate energy even during periods of darkness. In the experiments, the lack of light had no effect on power. This one was stable both day and night. Scientists believe this may be because cyanobacteria process some of their food once the sun has gone down and there is no light, and this still generates electricity. Such a cyanobacteria battery is not enough to power a home yet. Scalability is still being tested, but it will certainly be enough to power small devices, especially in remote locations. In the experiment, the device was used to power the ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor, a microprocessor widely used in Internet of Things devices. The Internet of Things is a growing network of electronic devices that collect and share data in real time via the Internet. Each of these devices consumes only a small amount of energy. Many billions of devices using cheap computer chips and wireless networks are part of this network, from smartwatches to temperature sensors in power plants. This number is expected to grow to 1 trillion devices by 2035, requiring a huge number of portable energy sources. The researchers say it would be impractical to power so many devices with lithium-ion batteries, it would require three times as much lithium as is produced annually worldwide. They also add that their device is better than traditional photovoltaic devices, because they are made of materials that have a negative impact on the environment. The experiments began in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the end of the experiment in August 2021, the battery continues to produce power. Exoplanet from the TRAPPIST-1 system under the microscope of the Webb Telescope. An international team of scientists has used the James Webb Space Telescope to study a rocky extrasolar planet in the TRAPPIST-1 system in more detail. The observations revealed that the innermost world in the system, an exoplanet called TRAPPIST-1b, reaches a temperature of 230 degrees Celsius and is unlikely to form an atmosphere there. With any news of the discovery of an Earth-like planet, we tend to have high hopes. They concern, for example, whether life can exist on it. Unfortunately, sometimes the results of more accurate observations make us realize that the mere fact of similarity in terms of, for example, Size is not enough for potential life to have any chance on a distant planet. After closer examination of one of the planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system, it turned out that it is very hot and most likely has no atmosphere. The discovery raises questions about the atmospheres around the system's cooler planets. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Nature. A few years ago, NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope discovered a group of seven rocky planets orbiting a star named TRAPPIST-1. This star is much smaller than our Sun, an M dwarf. Interestingly, in the Milky Way itself there are ten times more such stars than those resembling the Sun, and at the same time the probability of rocky planets orbiting them is twice as high. No wonder that in this respect they are in the crosshairs of astronomers. The discovery of these planets has sparked enthusiasm in the astronomical community because not only are all of them Earth-like in size, but also their distance from the star they orbit is potentially just right for liquid water to exist on them. They have even been found to be the best targets we have for searching for traces of atmosphere on such rocky planets. Of course, such analyzes can only have theoretical significance for us at the moment. Unfortunately, the planets orbiting TRAPPIST-1 are completely beyond our reach. They are about 40 light-years away from us. 
Recently, research on these planets has been in depth. And this is the case with the James Webb Space Telescope, which took a closer look at one of them, TRAPIST-1b. Of particular interest to scientists was the temperature prevailing on it, which particularly determines whether and to what extent it is potentially habitable. Using an infrared camera, it was decided to look at the thermal emission of the analyzed planet. However, before we get to the planet, a few more words about the star. Well, this type of dwarfs are much more active than our sun and emit high energy radiation, dangerous not only to potential life on planets, but even to their atmospheres. And unfortunately, in the context of TRAPPIST-1b, there is no good news, a human on the surface of such a planet would simply boil. It turns out that the temperature prevailing on it would effectively prevent the existence of any life, unless somewhere in the cosmos there are some forms of it that prefer such extreme conditions. The temperature on the planet reaches as much as 232 degrees Celsius. But that's not all. Apparently TRAPPIST-1b has no atmosphere at all. Moreover, half of this planet is constantly turned towards the star, while the other half is drowning in darkness. How can tardigrades survive without water? Researchers have discovered the secret to their success. Water is a key ingredient for life on Earth. However, there are creatures that can do without it even for decades. We are talking about tardigrades. Scientists have finally discovered a trick these microscopic animals use to survive years of extreme dehydration. Tardigrades have been delighting with their ability to survive for years. They cope with various, extremely difficult conditions, often fatal to most other forms of life. It is conceivable that by learning their secrets, we can apply this knowledge to ourselves to make people more resistant to extreme temperatures, pressure, and even dehydration. For now, it's just science fiction. But scientists are still trying to understand the mechanisms responsible for their resilience, as it may have other benefits as well. These tiny creatures, up to a millimeter in length, live almost everywhere, but they prefer aquatic environments. For this reason, they are sometimes called water bears. They can withstand pressure greater than that found in the deepest part of the ocean. They tolerate high levels of ionizing radiation, exposure to all sorts of chemicals, and are the only life form we know of to have survived in space. They can also go without water for decades. Scientists have just described a mechanism that explains how these creatures can withstand extreme dehydration. While water is an essential ingredient for all life as we know it, some tardigrades can potentially survive for decades without water. The trick is how their cells deal with this stress during the dehydration process, explains Takakazu Kunieda a biologist at the University of Tokyo. New research on the amazing properties of tardigrades has been published in Floss Biology. When these aquatic animals are in a dry environment, they shrink and take on a round shape. In this form, they become extremely stable and can withstand many extremes, including exposure to the vacuum of space. Scientists believe that when the water leaves the cell, some type of protein must help it maintain its physical strength so it doesn't collapse in on itself, explains Kunieda. So the researchers tested a group of tardigrades known for their ability to survive without water. In total, they identified 336 proteins that could be responsible for this phenomenon. After testing several different types, the researchers found that CAHS, cytoplasmic abundant heat soluble proteins unique to tardigrades are responsible for protecting their cells from dehydration using experiments on human and insect cells 
The researchers were able to show that CAHS proteins increase cell stiffness, helping them to resist shrinking due to water loss. These proteins also protected the cells from excess water. Attempting to check how CAHS proteins would behave in cultured insect and human cells posed a challenge for researchers. Because the method of staining them involves the use of aqueous solutions. For this reason, the researchers used ethanol in their experiments, which allowed them to see the CAHS proteins in action inside cells. CAHS proteins appear to act as cellular scaffolding structures similar to the cell's cytoskeleton. However, they only work when the cells run out of water. In dehydrated cells, CAHS proteins bind together. The cytoskeleton-like structures protect the cell from complete disfigurement due to lack of water and likely contribute to the remarkable stability of the cells. This process, called anhydrobiosis, can be reversed, allowing tardigrades to start life at the very moment they start to run out of water or other extreme conditions. Scientists have previously suspected that there is a protein-based mechanism that keeps cellular structures intact during drying. However, Previous studies have only looked for the genetic components of this ability. In the new work, the researchers focused on proteins. Neat biological tricks like these have allowed these eight-legged animals to reach all corners of our planet. From scorching volcanic vents and the crushing pressure of our ocean depths to tropical forests and icy tundra. Everything about tardigrades is fascinating, says Kunierda. The extreme range of environments in which these creatures can survive leads us to explore never-before-seen mechanisms and structures. For a biologist, this field is a gold mine, emphasizes the scientist.